unheard of. Welcome, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Unheard Of. You know who it is. It's your boy, ABG, my co-host with me, Jared. And uh, we're back. We're back, everybody, after a week uh, off and a couple of birthdays. So now we have come back to you another year older, another year wiser, maybe. Maybe. Uh, but um, yeah, man, uh, how was your birthday? How's your How's your week off? How was everything for you, Jared? Well, you know, everybody, all of our listeners, you know, you guys know on the show, I said that I was initially planning on seeing like the proceeds meteor shower with uh, my wife. However, um, the wildfires in California had other plans because we just had so much smoke in the air. Um, so it was impossible to see. But we had a nice night out. Uh, I got a couple of great gifts. A lot of you have been recognizing audio issues. Uh, this is one of them. Got some AirPod Pros. So, uh, yeah, you know, living the life. It was a good birthday. Nice night out. Week off has been busy because I had to replace the timing belt in my car for the emissions inspection. And, um, yeah, it's been great. Um, busy, but great. And uh, how about how about you, man? We know you had a good, nice weekend with Drew and the boys uh, right before your birthday, and then you got to celebrate yeah. after. Yeah, true. But I'm sorry. Before we get into that, I got I just got a couple questions to ask you, Jerry. Okay, so um, emissions. You're supposed to get your emissions uh, checked on your car, or whatever. Like, is it supposed to be like every year? Uh, yeah, yeah. When uh, Georgia does it too in some of the more populated counties uh, because when we lived in Paulding, we had to do it too. But basically, if your car is a certain age, they want you to do a emissions inspection yearly. Hmm. And that's just for like, um, what, just check in like how it runs and stuff like that? Yeah, I don't really know. I don't really know what they check honestly, but I know that when we were in Georgia and I had my, um, that red truck I used to have. Yeah. I literally, I only had that truck for a year when we were down there and then it wouldn't pass an emissions inspection because the check engine light was on. And, uh, so I, I ended up getting rid of it, but basically Colorado is a little bit easier to pass an emissions inspection if you have lights on it is they're just like yeah go fix it whatever but man i don't know what they check between the two states but like in colorado my car passed everything even though i needed to go get my timing belt replaced i've still got like a check engine light because uh i've got like a bad compressor at the moment so but see in colorado they're smart about that and they're like yeah you know you don't really need ac to drive the car <laughs> Um, so, but in Georgia, they were way more strict in Paulding County. Like, um, uh, even though the check engine light on that truck had basically been on ever since I got it, um, there was just like a small air leak in one of the valves or something somewhere. I took it to like three mechanics. They said, you're never going to find it. That check engine light's never going to go off, but it's going to run. Okay. But I couldn't get the emissions inspection passed because of the check engine light in Georgia. So if you can't, if your if your vehicle can't pass emissions, do you have to like what what like what do they do? You you can't register your car, so you can either figure it out or get start getting tickets. Wow, you get tickets for your car not being able to pass emissions, bro. Yeah, because you need an emissions to register it every year, like to renew that's, your tags. That's insane. Huh. I'm glad we don't do that in Polk County because. I mean, I'm sure my my car could probably pass my check engine light isn't on or anything like that, but still, like, ugh, that sucks. But yeah. um, also, getting away from that, uh, I also have another question to ask you, Jared. I mean, it's the it's a thing that I feel like is the is the most uh, talked about topic in um, unheard of lore, and that is 
what is going on with you and the TSA right now? How is that going? Has the TSA gotten back to you on the laptop? Uh, we just want to know what the word is. The TSA has not acknowledged my case at all. Um, at this point, I think it's been close to like a month or two, or probably two months since I sent in my uh, claim information, and they have not acknowledged me. <laughs> Apparently, it can take up to 60 days just to get acknowledged, and then after that, it can take up to 6 to 12 months to get your money back. So I let my frustration settle. I stopped worrying about it, even though my laptop is – completely broken the screen is it's had better days i don't know how much longer i'll be able to withstand it uh, but my beautiful wife is going to be getting a school refund soon and she mentioned that for my birthday that you know we just had uh she's going to be getting me a macbook so you know i'm looking forward to the macbook and the tsa um i still want my money I'm still going to get my money, but um, they have yet to acknowledge me. Dang. I mean, so, I mean, you, I mean, you said you let your frustrations uh, go down a little bit. I mean, you were, you were, you were real hot about it in the beginning. So uh, you just go on, you're going to talk, talk it up as an L or you going to, you going to keep with it. No, I'm, I'm persistent. So I'm calm now, but I'm persistent. So even if it takes me 10 to 12 months, I'm going to get my money. I just need to, uh, I guess I'm just in a waiting game now. And, you know, pretty soon I'll probably have another laptop anyways. All right. Well, we're going to keep you all updated on, on Jared and the TSA as, as new information comes in. Uh, well, as soon as we know, y'all will be the first to know. But um, I guess back to back to me and my week off and um, you know my birthday and everything. It was fun. It was uh, it was really nice uh, getting linked up with uh, Drew and you know the rest of his wedding party and everything. It was. I mean, we had a great time. We we had some drinks. We did some swimming, and um, yeah, we just hung out. It was it was good. I'm ready for the wedding now. Nice. So, but other than that, for my birthday, uh, you know, my girlfriend took me out. We had dinner. We, we, you know, we hung out. And I mean, I'm a I'm a low key person when it comes to celebration. So I don't ever ask for a lot of stuff or nothing like that. She bought me a pair of socks and yeah. uh, took me to Red Lobster. And you know, I was, I was, uh, you know, very happy with, with my birthday. So to me, it's just another day. It it is to me too. Honestly, I don't ask for anything like literally um tiff and other family members like nanny they will just drive something out of me until i tell them a gift because i'm like i'm like y'all don't have to get me anything at all like i'm perfectly fine and tiff um she got these airpods and like i said she's gonna be getting the macbook just because she says i've spent a lot of money on her this year and i have we uh got our new wedding set and I got her some AirPod Pros and an Apple Watch. So I think she's just returning the favor, even though, like I said, I'm perfectly fine with not having a lot. But so it's, I guess it was just a lucky year. You know, some things have turned out in our favor. We'll actually be back in Georgia in a couple of weeks. Oh, are right. Yeah, we are going to come down for old Colts going away party. Oh, yeah. So, I mean... What what day is that? That's on the that's on the tenth, right? Uh, no, I think it's on or the eighth. It's fifth? like the fifth. It's on a Sunday. It's like not okay. next Sunday, but the following Sunday. Okay, so so I mean, you guys, then you guys aren't gonna be able to stay for the wedding, then, huh? No. Yeah. No. It's messed up, man. Yeah, yeah. Come see Drew get married, man. Well, I wasn't gonna come for Colton's party either, and then some things just kind of happened with all that overtime I was making in Virginia to where we just kind of happened to have the extra money and Colton and Chris and Brooke said they would like to see the boys before Colton leaves. So I was like, eh, I guess we could do it. That's nice. That's a nice, th that's, that's, that's a nice thing to do for your brother, man. Just, you know, pop up, show support, let it, the kids see the fam. 
it got close to not mm-hmm. being able to happen because the the prices were going up really quickly when like whenever the check finally came in i was like man these tickets are already gone up like over a hundred dollars since i checked last time <sighs> um yeah that's good man this is gonna be good to see you you know Maybe we, maybe we can record a, a a little video of the boys together, of the unheard of boys. Hey, maybe. Oh, excuse me. Maybe together, we can do a live so. show. <laughs> maybe, um, maybe, maybe. I don't know. It's going to be fun. Uh, we'll, we're only going to be down for like two nights, so it's going to be a really quick trip. And then Tiff will be back the following week to visit uh, her sister because they're having twins. So going to be a busy few weeks and you guys know if you're listeners and i'm not overly religious but you know i've got something really big coming up tomorrow or actually over the next week and if you guys could just keep me in your thoughts send us some really good wishes that would be appreciated okay nice um so she so tiff is gonna be coming down for the for the party going back and then coming back again for the for her sister and she might as well just stay man you might as well hang on to the boys for a little bit well she probably would but she's got classes in college that she has to be at like physically oh okay Okay. yeah or else she probably would but since she has to physically be there it's best that she comes back i got you i got you Shoot, that's a lot of flying, man. I used to do a lot of flying, man. It's, it's easy. It's easy enough getting to the airport, and yeah. getting on your plane. But like when you fly out early in the morning, stuff that it can it can take a little toll, man. Well, you always end up tired, man. I don't know if you've seen flights or any airport this year, man. But it is getting rough. Like people are starting to travel again. They've started to like do these barricade lines uh, out by the doors and everything because. It's starting to get crowded. Like, I hate morning flights, but I would almost prefer it right now just because of how crowded the places are getting. I took Nanny to the airport to go back home Saturday morning, and um, the train was crowded. I'm thinking, like, uh, you know, what, what about COVID? Like, everybody's cramming into this train. And it, that, at that point, it was only, like, 6 a.m. or 5 what um what airport do you do you, uh does everybody fly into over there? Uh Denver. Denver? Okay. Yeah. So is it kind of is it kind of like the uh Hartsfield Jackson? It's an international airport. Hey, cat appearance. <laughs> um it's kind of I mean it's an international airport, but it's not it's nowhere near the size of Atlanta. Uh, Atlanta's just so huge. You know that from traveling to other yeah. airports. Um, I mean, it's big. It's got its own little metro rail, but it it's still nothing compared to like Atlanta. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Because you said the train. I was like, I mean, I know that uh, that Hartsville has, has one too. So yeah, it's still very small compared to Atlanta. <laughs> Yeah, I've uh, I've flown into a, a couple of small ones. The one in um, uh, not Iowa, is it Iowa that we Idaho? flew into? Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm more or less asking myself aloud. But yeah, that one's it's it's really small. Oh, it's I'm sorry, it's in Omaha, ah, Nebraska. Uh, Omaha, yeah, Nebraska. That uh, that airport is extremely tiny. You. You blink for a couple of seconds and you're all the way down the end of the airport. So yeah, so yeah, I've been to some to some pretty tiny ones, but um, yeah. So sorry, everybody. This has been a little bit of a long intro. We do have uh, an actual show plan for you guys, so uh, I guess we can, uh, without further ado, just hop into it. You know, I guess the people the people want what they want. We don't give it to them. You know what I'm saying? That's true. That's true. So um, go ahead and hit them over the head with the with the first. The first little bit was what we got for him, Jerry. Hey, we'll go ahead and get y'all started with something strong, okay? News of Afghanistan. Uh, the U.S. tried to uh, peacefully get out of the country like we had agreed to for probably like the last four or five years where we keep trying to pull our soldiers out. And, um, well, it finally happened. 
and the Taliban seemingly took overnight, like took everything over in one night, just about. Um, the Afghani president flew the country within like a day of them storming the capital because he didn't want to be uh, hung in the street like the previous president when the Taliban or when I think Al Qaeda at that time took over. Um, there's been crazy videos where there's just so many people in Afghanistan who want to leave the country because they don't want to be living under Taliban rule. Um, because last time the Taliban ruled the country, you know, they were doing things like basically killing women in the street. Women had no type of education rights, weren't really part of society. Um, and people are literally trying to hop on our military planes and flying off like in midair. So it's. Um, yeah, uh, I've seen a video like that. It's extremely it's sad, man. Um, yeah, definitely the, the Afghan uh, people and everything just hope, hope hoping for their safety man because like you said it it really took the taliban like maybe two days max to completely take over and there's been chaos fires all these countries are that you know were a part of the war and everything that are trying to they had troops over there trying to get everybody out they're trying to get refugees out. And I think uh, what that they had until August 30th to, yep. to, to get out. And so that's only, that's only eight days away. So yeah. I think they, there's still a lot of people, a lot of people still there. So I think they, they got um, somewhere, I think like maybe 30,000 people out from, mm. I, I think it was official. They took over on the, the 13th. Uh, yeah. August, and and then they, uh, you know, just kind of have been trying to get people out ever since. Uh, so the cat is still coming, coming through. Her name is her name is Patches, my girlfriend's cat. Oh, meow back to you too. Um, oh, you look you look very bright now. Okay, okay, we in HD yeah. now, baby. Had to fix the lighting. But um, yeah, it's just a. Uh, a uh, very, a uh, very touchy situation going on over there right now. So, I mean, I I hope to see you know everybody that needs to 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 get out out you know by that by that August thirtieth because I don't nobody wants to see what what's gonna happen if you know we still have some some soldiers there trying to get out you know or if you know the British soldiers are, are trying to get out or just you know. Uh, refugees are trying to get out so hopefully everybody makes it out safely there's already been fires I've, i think i've already said that you know everything everything's going on over there so yeah. i think it's a it's a dang shame um i mean we have been in the middle east for like three decades man and yeah it's for us to spend billions of dollars for american lives to have been lost over there. Um, you know, we built a government for them. We helped train their troops to fight like the Al Qaeda and Taliban. So we wouldn't have to. Um, and we've seen it in the past. There's been multiple battles where we've tried to let them fight their own battles and they just basically flee automatically and retreat. Same thing happened. We were like, Hey, we're finally done. We're getting out. And the first thing the president does is like flee the country and he's supposed to be leading the troops. So they just like, don't even care about fighting. Taliban takes over like super easily. And now they've got uh, millions of dollars worth of U S military vehicles and weapons. And um, to me, it sucks. If you're like, a, if you're a family member or, you know, people that lost their lives over there and like fought for this, and for it to like all be wasted would uh, be a terrible feeling. You know, I it, to me, I feel like this is. I mean, I there's people always saying that uh, you know uh, wars are pointless and it's mostly just to get the United States and its allies uh, uh, like a shit ton of money. But that's what that's pretty much what wars are now. It's just a money game. Um, 
now I feel like I, hopefully that this wakes up more Americans to show them that like us being in countries isn't always, you know, it's not always beneficial. Yeah. And we like and we've been there, we've been there for so long, like you said. And I mean, what what have we gotten what have we gotten out of it? Like what nothing but death and and now now we have to, you know, flee, which I mean like we shouldn't have been really messing in there in the first place. Yeah, like I don't if anybody is for us staying in Afghanistan, like I get the human side of it because there's a bunch of people there whose lives are at risk. Yeah. But I mean what are we supposed to do? Are we just supposed to risk our own American lives and be the world's peace officers for the rest of eternity? Like, because uh, like I said, there's a history of them always fleeing battles against Al Qaeda and Taliban. So honestly, if we would have left after five years, the Taliban or Al Qaeda at the time would have taken over probably super easily. So I think the results are going to be the same no matter what, because as soon as we leave, their government obviously has no backbone. Yeah. So, so it's a really just a, an unfortunate situation is going on right now. And so, yeah. Really disturbing videos. Um, if anybody has seen those videos of like the people falling from the planes and stuff, crazy. <laughs> but shoot, yeah. Hopefully, um. You know, hopefully stuff settles down soon, but it probably won't for the people in Afghanistan. <laughs> um, and then I saw, I saw something that, that said, um, like Bush and other, and other like, you know, uh, right wing uh, uh, politicians from like that era, like the, you know, the early 2000s are um, all like, are pretty much saying like, you know, this isn't our fault or anything like that. Like, I mean, well, maybe the, not, but it's, you guys didn't help the situation at all. Well, the Taliban taking over isn't their fault. We, like I said, America has been keeping the peace, you know, whatever peace there was in the cities for a long time. Uh, like Obama did the same type of thing where, he wanted to pull out of Afghanistan a few years back, uh, but then they basically said, hey, if you pull out of Afghanistan, the Taliban is probably going to take over. And so he committed like more years and stuff, which made a lot of people upset. But now <laughs> those same people are like, dang, would this have happened if Obama would have pulled out then too? Like, yeah, it would have. Probably. Um but, um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I just to, don't like just hate to see everything. I just don't like the idea of American lives being wasted. It's kind of like similar to the Vietnam troops because the war wasn't really like a battle we should have been in anyways. So uh, to see it all go to crap so easily and quickly <laughs> is uh, disturbing. Yeah, this. uh just another the, another notch to the American military that is kind of a I don't know would you say an embarrassment? Uh, maybe the, uh, the American military is an embarrassment. No, I'm saying like you know just you know wasting all the time and resources and uh, lives on 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 that you know. I think it's an embarrassment on the government. I like, thank God the uh we have like social media to see that type of thing now where they're like oh this is the government's fault not like troops because vietnam troops they were treated pretty awfully by the citizens back home when they got back yeah so yeah maybe maybe not so much as military embarrassment yeah government embarrassment yeah but i mean it is what it is i'd say seeing american lives wasted um because when you see the Taliban took over like that easily, you're like, you're like, think of all the lives that we lost too, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So. Yeah, but also, I mean, hey, it's not, a, it's not all about American lives. It's sad to see the 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 Afghan lives uh, being lost as well. 
I mean, it's it's sad for them too, but when you think about our situation, yeah. Like, we had people that actually fought for them. Well, yeah. But, you know, it's, it's, it's sad to see them in that situation as well, not just our situation. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Apparently, the U.S. ordered, like, five different commercial airlines now to go into Afghanistan and help um, refugees and people evacuating the country. Yeah. Like American Airlines, Delta, United, or just like three of them that are supposed to go fly into Afghanistan and uh, help people flee. And what's the, uh, what's the, the city? Is it, it uh, how's it pronounced? Is it Kabul? Kabul. Kabul. Yeah. Something like that um, is where they're, uh, is that like the main spot where everybody's flying out of? Yeah. yeah. So. That was like the only airport that had international flights in Afghanistan. Hmm. So. Well, hopefully everybody, like I said, everybody that, that is trying to get out can get out. And, um, you know, if they're, if they're the refugees, if you're coming to America, if you're hearing this on the off chance, I mean, welcome to America. And, um, you know, hopefully you guys find better lives and are treated better than, uh, than what might have possibly happened if you were to have stayed in Afghanistan under Taliban rule. So, so yeah. Yes. And now, speaking of America, let's talk about America's favorite sport, football. Baseball? No, that's... That's labeled America's pastime for no reason. Everybody loves football That's more true. than they do baseball. Nobody, like, people talk about baseball all the time. I can't even, like, get into baseball, bro. Like, I don't I don't know what it is. I, I listen to 929. They're, they're talking about baseball. I kind of just tone out or, or turn on music because, like, baseball's so boring. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'll go watch a game. I like going to the games from time to time. But, yeah, I don't absolutely. I don't watch it on TV. I don't keep up with the season. So, no, no. I mean, I get the, I, I get a, uh, a little bit of updates on when I'm listening to the, to the radio, but I mean, yep. what, the, uh, I believe the Braves are in like, last time I, last time I was listening to the radio, they were in first place with a nice lead in uh, the NL East. So maybe they still have their lead. I don't know. Baseball, they play so many freaking games. The, the Braves could be in third place. So who knows? Who knows? Yeah, I, I don't know. Y'all in first place in the NLE, so shout out to y'all. All but, I know um, is football is where it's really at. And we've had yeah, yeah, yeah. some of these nice rookie quarterbacks playing in the preseason over the past couple weeks. Um, are you calling them nice? Yeah. I wouldn't say that. A couple oh, you, I thought you, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about uh, the Falcons quarterbacks. Nah, nah. I was going to say, no, these guys suck. <laughs> the, the Falcons could have had one who played good. If you've seen how Justin Fields has been playing in the preseason. Oh he's, yeah. He's been lights out, man. He's been doing good. I thought Trey Lance showed potential. Still needs a little work, even though he's probably like the top rated prospect out of quarterbacks. Um, he's just getting comfortable right now. I think he's going to look really good. Mac Jones looks really good in the Patriots. Um God, Zach Wilson for the Jets. He looks okay. He's got a rocket arm. I'm trying to think. Who was number one? Uh, Trevor. Yeah, Trevor Lawrence. Yeah, Trevor Lawrence. Um, I how, think he's looked okay. Yeah, I'll say I, I've seen him. I've seen a couple of plays. You know, I, I think I saw one he threw a nice little bomb. Uh, I, I think he looked okay. People are saying that he's probably going to be really good for fantasy this year. But, man, I don't know. Jacksonville, they still got, like, a tough t- – like, they got a rough-looking team, you know? I mean, I don't know if he's even going to win five games this season. Hope he does, but, shoot, it's Jacksonville. You know what always gets me, man? Yep. How does Florida have three NFL teams? Yeah, Miami, um, Jacksonville. Jacksonville and Tampa Bay. Yeah. How do they have three? Those are huge markets. A lot of people live there. I guess. Like, because look at the NBA. They also got Miami, Orlando. Um, 
Is that it? Miami, Orlando? Yeah. Yeah. But they've got a bunch of teams in California and Texas. That's true. Golden State, yeah. two LA teams, uh, Sacramento. So I think it's just based on the areas. A lot of people live there, so the market's good. Fair enough. But um, yeah, back to back to the back to the old football. Did you uh, have you caught either one of our two uh, preseason games yet? I watched enough of the uh, Tennessee game to know that I still hate watching the Falcons in preseason. Uh, yeah, absolutely. We got uh, absolutely demolished in the first preseason game, and then we got, I mean, still demolished, but a little bit better uh, in the second preseason game. Got to see uh, uh, Young Way Koo kick a nice little 53-yarder uh, yeah. in the second preseason game. So, I mean, of course, somehow, some, some way, we always end up having a really good kicker. So um, uh, shout out to that. That's that's probably the, one of the best things I've seen. Uh, we have AJ McCarron, who actually has gotten a non-contact knee injury, so I don't think he'll be playing um, for the the third preseason game, which I hope not either. I hope we see some more of the starters. Yeah, Matt Ryan and, better um, get in there before the yeah. preseason's over. Like we got one more game. We need to see our starters to see what it, they're, they're going to look like. I mean, we're probably one of the only teams that haven't played starters yet at all. Yeah, we are, which is weird because, su- surprising fact, Atlanta is also the only team in the NFL to be 100% vaccinated. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah, we're also fully vaccinated, which is crazy. But, um, yeah, it's just like, you know, with this new system, new coach, and everything, I, I mean, we know what we got, but still a little skeptical, you know. We we kind of want to see it in practice, not like practice, but like see it, you know, see the layout of what's gonna, you know, what's gonna be happening before yeah. the regular season starts. And I mean, I don't know. I just want to. I want to be excited about the team. These two preseason games have given me nothing to be excited about. Not even the backups, man. Go, oh my God. AJ McCarron uh, can't throw a football to save his life. I'm pretty sure, what, we've only got three preseason games this season? Yeah. So, yeah. man, they better get those starters some reps before the season starts or else we're going to be probably looking rough when the season begins again. Yeah. Because we have uh, – it's, what, next week? For the uh, for the the last preseason game, and then we got our first game with against Philadelphia. Yeah. So. And granted, Philly doesn't really look too good, but hey, yeah, I don't know, man. They do this crap every year in Atlanta, and you would think with a new coach, you'd want to see those guys play at least a little bit, like every other team's doing it, man. You got all these other teams showing their starters off at least for like a quarter. Yeah. Um, and we're just not doing it. Like we we probably have the most starters sitting out of the preseason. It's uh like it don't even it don't even have to be for a full quarter if they don't want to. Like they're what like they're afraid of maybe people getting injured. Like I well, mean they can get act- injured the first time they step out on the first play, uh in the first in the first game. So like yeah, we I mean we act like do. our starters are do, let's play. we act like our starters are proven. Like, what are they proven? Because the last time I checked, we've missed the playoffs like the last two years. Uh, yeah. Uh, listen, they ain't proven. They ain't proved much to me. So, uh, saw a cat behind me. But um, yeah, they they haven't proved a damn thing to me. So, That's true. dude, you thing, know what's surprising? Like said, what's that? Oh no, go ahead. Because I'm pretty sure you're going to talk about the Falcons, and I was about to talk about something else. Okay. Yeah, like, like I said, if, if anything, it's it's we're not we're not uh, like I'm not very hopeful. Like this this uh, isn't bringing me hope because like I mean we're putting out our our second unit, you know, like our our uh, our second units out there. And I mean they're not they're not doing anything either. So what if our stars do get get injured? Like this team is gonna go completely down the drain. Yeah, well, 
like as, God as you know did that uh Matt Ryan you know gets seriously injured because um but also I, I saw that uh today that they were looking for uh another quarterback yeah. today because I mean like I said we we uh AJ McCarron went down so I don't know how long he's gonna be out for I mean and we have uh eighth year senior Felipe Franks out there doing his thing but um yeah it's just it's uh it's not looking looking up you know man all i'm saying is like because even with the second and third stringers uh you know why aren't we calling any good plays either like uh we're just not looking good and it's typical falcons mo you know like in the preseason we we just look god awful every year in the preseason but and our last preseason game is against the Browns. So I think our starters need to get in there because uh, that would be a really good matchup to get their feet wet. Yeah. I mean, they're probably going to – I mean, they're definitely going to be playing some starters uh, as well in the Browns. So, I mean. That's true. Um, but, um, I mean, I, whatever. I guess I'm, I'm still I'm still definitely excited for the season. And for you know all the other teams and everything, so uh, I mean, ready for some football, but they're not starting it off very well for me. And like, why aren't we playing Kyle Pitts, our first round draft pick? Like, he should at least be getting some preseason reps. Did he? He he didn't get any. He hasn't played yet. No. Hmm. Interesting. I thought I saw a clip of him. Uh, out to the field or something uh, uh, in this latest pre- preseason game. He was walking around the field, but he didn't play. Huh. Like I said, the Falcons, they were sitting out like 17 to 20 people. And I don't know why. I mean, maybe Arthur Smith's got something up his sleeve, man. Uh, I mean... Uh... And then also they've been having those uh, joint practices. They had those two joint practices with uh, with Miami before this game. Yeah. I mean, our starters look great. Like our uh, supposedly our starting uh, uh, defensive line were like you know making making two a run for his life and getting hits on the quarterback and everything. So yeah. Well. Yeah. But then again, it's it's just running drills on uh, practice. So other teams are man. That's what makes me mad. Other teams we're getting to see like the starters just play a little bit. Like um, Cam Newton, man, he's actually looking pretty good. Like I think he's uh, he's a little healthy. He's been playing pretty good for New England in the preseason. Top five quarterback in the league this season. That's what Cam right. is about to be. Dra- draft him first round then in our fantasy league. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna do that. <laughs> top five. Listen, if I draft a top, uh, if I draft a, a quarterback in the first round, it's gonna be somebody that's gonna get me some points, dog. It's gonna be like a, uh, like a, like a dang. Um, now my brain has gone blank. So we're just going to skip over it. Never mind. I'll tell you this, just to make some of our listeners upset, I'm going to go ahead and say this. You talk about how bad our, like, second string and third string looks in the preseason game. I'm going to bring it up. Y'all know why it is. We ain't got no money to spend. Nowhere else. Even with Julio gone, we're one of, like, the top salary cap teams in the league. So, yeah, until we get some money to actually spend on some talent, hell, son, I don't know. Need to get better at drafting talent. Yeah. So I mean, I I thought we 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 were we went into a good direction with this draft. Yeah, this draft was pretty good, but yeah, because we're we're uh, we're pretty strapped for cash, so um. We're going to have to have some good drafts in the upcoming years. Chair. <laughs> I'm having some, some chair difficulties over here, y'all. I don't know for, for everybody watching on uh, YouTube. I mean, you can definitely see me have my struggles, but 
Um, yeah, on YouTube, I mean, on, on <laughs> streaming, uh, you guys get to just hear me talk about my frustration. So, <sighs> anyways, back to football. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I feel like uh, a lot of the newer talent quarterbacks, like you said, are, are playing are playing really well. But I don't know. It's just hard to focus on anything other than the Falcons and us being Dookie. So, <laughs> yeah, we'll see what happens. But um, God, these these starters better play in the Browns game, man. At least a quarter or ten plays, whatever. We need to see some reps. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like everybody's talking about us not not uh, playing starters, dude. I, I bet you, dude, Arthur Smith is gonna is gonna be like, uh, well, hell, y'all ain't gonna see him at all. Yeah, <laughs> y'all ain't gonna see him to the first game. They might, they might. Um, there's not a lot of uh, storylines going on the in the NFL right now either. Um, no, not too much. Um, ever since Aaron Rodgers Sean- came back. Is Deshaun Watson uh is he playing? Is yeah. he is he he's be playing? Oh yeah, we we already talked about this. You already said yes. Um, they uh, uh I don't know. So they had some official clarification on it this past week. So basically, like the NFL has suspended Antonio Brown before for stuff he's never been charged with, like criminally in the yeah. court of law. However, the NFL will not um interfere with an actual criminal investigation. So they they're gonna let Deshaun Watson's whole thing play out and he's gonna get to play. And then when that's all done, the NFL will conduct its own investigation and that's when he'll probably get suspended. So we're looking at probably next season. But I mean what is a what is an official NFL investigation? Well they got PIs or something like that? Like who the who are they, they, got, who are they getting to, uh, to investigate stuff? I mean, I know they uh, did the whole investigation behind the um, behind the deflated balls and stuff like that uh, with with old TV and yep. uh, and uh, the Patriots. But other than that, like, what's a what does an, an official NFL investigation look like? Especially something as sensitive as this. They've got um, they've got former prosecutors that they use as investigators. And basically the NFL, I think, has started their investigation because they've already reached out to a lot of his accusers. However, like I said, they will not interfere with the current ongoing criminal investigation. It's like they waited till Michael Vick went to jail before they started doing all his stuff in the NFL, like, you know, uh, talking about his suspension. When can he be reinstated? All that happened after he went to jail. Uh, so it's kind of similar to Deshaun Watson. Dang, I'm so tore up about that, man. But, man, I don't know. Deshaun Watson might get away from this because it came out this past week where one of his accusers were actually exposed because they were initiating more sessions. Like, you know, she came out, part of the lawsuit said she was abused, uh, you know, emotionally harassed, all that stuff. And then they released text messages saying that she wanted him to keep coming back. Who, Deshaun? Like the accuser wanted Deshaun to keep coming back. Uh, I mean, that doesn't look good for their argument. Yeah, like you said. <laughs> like they, they mean... fear that a few of the accusers asked him to come back several times um Dang, you think they got stockholm syndrome bro maybe i mean i don't know like as soon as the judge came out and said that they were going to have to release their names you know like two or three women dropped from the suit because they didn't want their names out there like what if they had a bad case uh, i don't know this thing just gets I, I feel like every time we talk about it there's new stuff out and it just gets i know i don't messier and messier and I don't like making accusations either. So I just want to see what the final outcome is. Like, what are the actual yeah. facts that come out from a court case? Because almost everything right now can be reported and some of it can even be factual. But to me, it's just still kind of all hearsay until it goes to court or whatever. 
Yeah. Um, also, yeah, that's who I was talking about. Uh, first round. If I draw, if they're definitely a quarterback first round. It would probably be Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. I don't know. I've never had. I mean, I've never had him. I don't know how good he is for points. I mean, I'm pretty sure he's a he's a good uh, point machine. He's good, but if you look historically, the top five fantasy quarterbacks are always dual threat guys. Yeah. Um, because unless you just get a pocket passer who can throw four or five touchdowns a game, then you know that changes things. But typically, I go for the dual threat guys who can use their legs a little bit. So, Russell Wilson. Um, Lamar Jackson used to be Cam Newton. I used to love drafting Cam in a fantasy. Um, yeah, I'm sure. What Josh Allen? Josh Allen's another good one. There's a lot of, uh, well, it's getting tough because a lot of guys that are coming into the league now are dual threat guys. <laughs> so that's just kind of the way the league is heading. But I try to go for them instead of uh, like general pocket passers. All right. Like Dak um, Prescott, if he can stay healthy, I think he'd be a really good fantasy quarterback this year because he was already going to break the passing record like last year. Yeah, and I I don't know, man. With the Cowboys, people talk all this stuff about how the – I feel like when people talk about the Cowboys, people talk about the Cowboys the same way that people talk about um, like Notre Dame. Yeah, or something like that in college. Like, oh, it's supposed annoying. To be getting getting better. They're coming. They're coming every season. They got all this talent. They're they're gonna be a problem. And then, I mean, the num the numbers look good. They just never translate it into you know being better in the postseason. Yeah, yeah, no, they suck. But they they know how to get their names in the media. Just kind of kind of like Notre Dame. Yeah, it, it, um, they got the highest. Uh, is still is Ezekiel still uh, the highest paid running back? Uh, no, no. Who's the highest paid running back right now? Mm, it's not Zeke. I don't think it's Derrick Henry either. I doubt it. Because Derrick Henry signed a team friendly deal. Uh, Nick Chubb. Also signed a team friendly deal. I say Nick didn't get nearly, I feel like, as much money as he's worth. <laughs> I, th- I mean, hey, if you look at Nick's track record, I think he's interested in winning. So, I mean, yeah. I mean, I definitely think that that, that uh the Browns are gonna be definitely a team to watch this, oh, this season. I bet it's Christian McCaffrey. I'm gonna look it up right uh, now. Probably, yeah, probably. I, I don't know. I don't even think how we didn't think about that. I would say Christian McCall, Christian Mac, uh, Mac, McCaffrey. Um, it is maybe Alvin Kamara. Alvin Kamara is second, behind Christian McCaffrey. Kamara second, and Zeke is third. Yep. Okay. Or actually, sorry, Alvin Kamara and Ezekiel Elliott tie for second with fifteen um, million a year, and Christian McCaffrey was- makes sixteen million a year. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop you there for for a second, Jared. Your your audio is going a little in and out. All right, what about now? Um, yeah, your audio sounds better, but your video is also frozen again. <laughs> nope, there you are. Hello. Oh. All right, there we go. Uh, Hello. it's not frozen on my end, man. It's not frozen on my end. I, I mean, that's the that, that's the only <laughs> yeah, that's all, that's the only end that you're recording. So I mean, I guess that's really the only end that matters. So. Um, um, but no, McCaffrey was first with 16 mil a year, and Kamara and Zeke are tied for second with 15 mil a year. But uh, Zeke has the highest value deal at like 90 million, yeah. Okay, yeah, because I mean, I know he got a, a pretty penny, so yeah, so, so yeah, um, I mean, I just feel like all that talent that they have, uh, Cowboys have, um, you know, the quarterback, running back. They just it just doesn't equal to a damn thing whenever it comes down to it, you know. Yeah, no, the Cowboys. I hate the Cowboys. I hate the fans. Um, I hate the media for talking about them so much because there's just stupid topics on ESPN every single day about the Cowboys. I, hey, if they're not winning, why are we talking about them? So, uh, you know, it is what it is. But shoot. Let me see. 
I was trying to think of something to do with the NFL, but I think I lost it. Completely lost my mind. But uh, no, I hate the Cowboys. They are basically just like Notre Dame to me. I can't stand how they get talked about so much when they've literally been dog crap for like 20 plus years. <laughs> I mean, uh, what, how, how, when, when did, uh, when did Tony Romo retire, dude? What was that like? Like 2014? Early 2014. Yeah. Like they haven't. Something like that. 2014, 2015. Haven't done anything. So. Man. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't I don't understand why they get talked about so much. They're just – they've got the media in the palm of their hands. It, it is what it is, sports media and the Dallas Cowboys. Hey, they're America's team, man. Man. So, huh, it's um, it's been a crazy week. It's been a real crazy week. Yeah. And uh, I feel like news-wise, sports-wise, we're pretty much everything. That's true. Um, so, yeah, like I said, man, I'm looking for a lot of good thoughts uh, coming into this week because I got some really important career stuff that I'm trying to accomplish. Um, and if that happens, it'd be really great. So, People send some good vibes my way. Oh yeah, listen, you know everybody. I feel like everybody that listens to to unheard of is, is is definitely you know hoping hoping for the best for you, man. Hey, shoot, that's good. Have you been um Have you been watching the new Marvel What If show? Um, I've actually seen the first episode with um. With the uh, Captain Captain uh, America, you know, with uh, Captain Carter. Yes, Captain Carter. The, um, with Peggy Carter becoming Captain Carter, uh, taking taking Steve Rogers' place, I should say. Yeah. And I thought that was a I thought that was a really good episode. He uh, uh, and and so instead of you know Steve Rogers, you know, getting getting his get his uh body upgrade and stuff like that he he got like the first version of the iron man suit so yep. i mean that was that was really cool to see i like I, and i like the animation style they use as well so so it was pretty good i like the ending with you know her popping up outside of that portal and um and you know uh, yeah everybody's names names are just not coming out of my mouth uh <laughs> Uh, this week, so bear with me, everybody. Um, well, I haven't Steve, uh, Samuel Jackson's character, man, Agent Fury, Nick Fury, yes, Nick Fury, and uh, and uh, Hawkeye, you know, uh, you know, being at the portal whenever she whenever she pops out of it, that was that was pretty cool. Um, yeah, I don't know, I like that, I like that episode. I know they have. Another episode out with um, uh, Black Panther. Like, what if what if he had become uh, Star Lord? So, I mean, I'm really I'm looking forward to that episode. I know that he's a uh, uh, Chadwick Boseman is in how many episodes uh, of What If? You know, I don't know. I thought that was his only one. I think Colton told me he was in a few episodes, maybe two. I don't want to be wrong. I'd have to look it up. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I say Colton said he was in a few in a few episodes. So if if he, if I'm wrong, then Colton's wrong. Y'all blame him for being wrong. <laughs> this is just the information I got from him. But um, yeah, I, I'm I'm gonna be happy to uh, see Chad, or at least to hear Chadwick Boseman, Ch Chadwick Boseman, uh, you know, coming back and you know voicing um, uh, Press the Chala. Yeah, think it's all actually now after, after uh, you know after so much so much time of not seeing, or you know hearing his voice you know as that character. So this will be a nice little nice little period 
on on him being in the MCU. I yeah. thought like it would be a nice, a nice, a nice, decent little way for him to go out. True, and I haven't seen the second episode yet, um, but we are looking forward to it. As far as other Marvel news, Spider Man trailer watch is still ongoing. Still hasn't showed up on our doorsteps, folks. Suppose I think it's a myth. Uh, they didn't actually that that film. They didn't film it. It didn't yeah. happen. Um, the rumor news is it's going to come out on the twenty third or twenty fourth, so either Monday or Tuesday this week. Um, but who knows? There's been so many reports. Um, Kevin Feige said the movie is coming out in December as planned, but I don't know, man. It's they already delayed Venom by like two weeks and. The new Spider-Man movie would have probably easily made a billion dollars before COVID. So, uh, who knows? Maybe they're going to delay that one, too. Um, and I feel like I brought this up on the show uh, uh, before, but were they were they planning on putting Tom Holland at, uh, in that Venom movie at all? I don't think so. Uh, I, mean, I know it's a, it's a Sony movie. Now. I mean, I know that Sony has the has the rights to Spider-Man, so they can put him in the movie if they want to. I so. think I think the plan is to start one after this upcoming film. Um, I know the reports are out there. Um, I don't think we're going to get everything we want. Like, everybody's talking about all these other Spider-Man being in the film and all these other villains. I think those reports may be a little exaggerated. Um because the expectations are so high for the film. However, uh, Loki has kind of set like a crazy story up because previously, um, if you've seen the Venom film, I think it's easy to assume that Tom Hardy's Venom and Tom Holland's Spider-Man are not in the same universe. So now with the whole multiverse being broken from Loki, I think now they're planning on being like, okay, now Spider-Man and Venom can finally cross over in uh, Sony's stories. Yeah, and um, also, okay, so I don't know. I feel like uh, that Disney and the MCU kind of, for lack of a better phrase, uh, blew their load. (laughs) with uh with that with that second spider-man movie and you know um mysterio saying that he was from a another timeline a different earth and you know that obviously being a lie and yep. um i feel like either they should have made that like yes true that he was actually from an alternate timeline on alternate earth um especially especially because he he said it was from the uh he said his earth was 616. Like that's the that's like the main canon uh earth, I feel like, uh, right in the in the comic books, right? Yeah. So I mean that's that's a, that's a pretty big thing for that for that to also turn out to not be true. And then in this phase, they are moving towards you know the the multiverse and everything. So I don't I don't know. I feel like they kind of they kind of blew it a little early on it to not be real and now they're actually doing it what did i say man i said that marvel has been doing this crap to fans for so long (laughs) where stuff in like the trailers and everything turned out to not be real and now spider-man has so many crazy expectations that maybe they're not releasing a trailer because it's put like subpar of everything that they've built i mean Come on, let's be real. The first Spider-Man movie was 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 nice. The second one was dope. Like, I don't I don't think that they're gonna make a subpar movie. I don't. No, no, no. I think the movie's it's possible. I think the movie's still gonna be really good. I'm just talking about the trailer, uh, sub, like subverging people's expectations. Yeah, and I mean, I, I definitely think there's a, there's gonna be stuff that. They're not going to show us, dude. I'd be trailer. okay. I'd be okay with a one minute clip of yeah, like Spider Man swinging through the city, and be like, "No way home" releases this date. Yeah, like him swinging through the city, or him talking to to Ned, 
And um, now her name is escaping me. I know it's like the MJ nickname, but I, whatever. Zendaya. 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 I mean, yeah, but I, I was, I was, I was, her character, what's her character's name again? MJ. Yeah, but that's not what they, that's not what they, he doesn't call her that in the, in the movies. Did he start calling her that in the second movie? Yeah, because at the end of the first film, she yeah, said, I, I mean, go by MJ. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, MJ. All right, never mind. Anyways, yeah, I'm talking to Ned and, M- and MJ about, you know, maybe about, like, what's going on. You know, now his whole information is out there about him being Spider-Man. Like, it doesn't have to be big. You do not have to show us anything that's going to be like, oh, my God. Like, oh, if they do include these other, the other, uh, the previous uh, Spider, Spider-Man characters, you don't have to show us that in the trailer. You, you don't have to show yeah. us that. It's cl- I feel like it's getting close enough to the uh, the date. Like, give us a nice little teaser trailer. Show us a little bit of action. And yeah, that's all. That's really all we need. That's all. That's all Sony and uh, Disney need to give to us. And I feel like they're they're fumbling the bag heavy. Yeah. They better do it soon. The bag is large. The the potential bag is large, but they're just they they're they're not carrying it right. The bag, they're the fumble in the bag. They gotta do it soon before they start to lose interest in the movie. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I haven't like movies that I'm excited for. I mean, I don't stop talking about uh, you can ask my girlfriend. I've been talking about this finally. Finally, we're getting this uh candyman movie. This weekend, man, I am, you don't know how excited I am about it, bro. Like, <laughs> like, uh, uh, like Candyman is one of the only, uh, like, you know, like the, one of the tall tales to miss that I like actually believed as a kid, the movie scared the, like the hell out of me when I was little too. And like now, I mean, I love the movie yeah. and, um, and everything, but like just this continuation just like being a continuation from the first movie uh like i don't know this movie has got me so hyped and then when it got delayed the first time and uh you know it's supposed to be coming out and then they delayed it until this year because you know they uh covid and the the director uh nia da costa said that she wanted uh more people to be able to to watch it like now that it's coming out this weekend man i cannot wait i am so excited Woo. Man. after that movie man i might walk into the to the to the to the bathroom at the uh movie theater and say say candy man five times dog after that dog i'm i'm ready for it <laughs> yeah <laughs> so i ready. mean um i know theater numbers were kind of going back up and then they went down because of this whole delta variant mess yeah. Um, but now it seems like a lot of people are getting the vaccine. You know, some of them are being forced to, but it is what it is. I'm hoping the movies kind of really goes back to a normal by the end of the year, because I would love to go see Spider-Man in theaters. And, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be a big crowd. I'm just, it'd be really cool to see like a big crowd in theaters again. Yeah. And listen, as a, like on, uh, on Tuesday, I will be, fully vaccinated so like it'll be the two weeks after you know, oh after yeah I, yeah after I, after I got my second shot so like i feel like hey listen i ain't got nothing to lose after that i'm going to the movies probably yeah. either friday night or mm, i really don't want to go saturday night probably friday night i'm going friday night to watch candy man so so catch me catch me at your local theater not your local theater but uh <laughs> yeah Somewhere around, somewhere around the, the area, uh, watching watching Candyman and Dog, like, oh, I'm so ready for it. But also, speaking of movies, uh, a movie that we kind of, that came out a couple weeks ago, we didn't really uh, get to talk about it because, I mean, I, I, at the time, I hadn't seen it yet. Um, but uh, that movie is uh, Suicide Squad. It, my brain, I'm telling you, my brain the is on Suicide Squad. today. Yeah, The Suicide Squad, not not the uh, old Suicide Squad movie. No, this is not. This is not that one. This is not your mother's uh, Suicide Squad movie. This movie is ultra violent. Uh, very. The comedy in it is weird. <laughs> like, it's weird, but it's funny. It, 
it, yeah, it's it's funny. It's funny. Um, I think I think everybody in uh, the main the uh, the main cast of the Suicide Squad like really knocked their knocked their characters out of the park. Um, John Cena. Um, I talked to I talked to somebody who they like John Cena. They like the you know the wrestling and stuff, and they're like, it's hard to see him. You know, I mean, he's done movies before. Um, as a such a big movie uh, and him being such a big featured character in it, uh, they're like it's hard seeing him doing that weird comedy, yeah, as that character. So I mean, I feel where they're coming from from that, but I think I think he just did a really good job, you know, dude. That first scene where him and Idris Elba's uh, blood sport meet, and uh, he's like, oh, Idris Elba's character blood sport. He's like, are you having a laugh? Like you. The things you to like Amanda Waller, yeah. Uh, he's like you just mentioned that he basically does everything that I do, and then John Cena walks out. He's like, but better. Yeah, but I do it better. Um, and then the eating a eating a bag of dicks that was funny. The whole the whole exchange. Oh, also, I mean, we, we spoilers. I had it. Yeah, you haven't watched the Suicide Squad. I mean, we already spoiled it, so um, that's true. Um, um but anyways. Uh, when they go into the freaking camp, yes, that's exactly and, what I was about to say. And uh, you know, he's like, nothing, nothing like a bloodbath to start the morning. He's like, I cherish peace with all my heart. I don't care how many men, women, and children I need to kill to get it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, bro! Like that was, it was so good. And, and then they were actually killing, of killing, killing the people that that they were supposed to be working with. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that that was that was hilarious. Um, just just them ramping up the violence and like trying to outdo each other, just walking through the camp, absolutely obliterating everybody that they saw. Um, I like that. And uh, Polka Dot Man, I I love Polka Dot Man. A lot of people are saying like the unsung hero, the real hero of the movie was King Shark. Um, nah, man, I love Polka Dot Man. He was he was great. Um, just like. An obviously clinically depressed man, yeah. That uh, that has mother issues, throwing polka dots at people that absolutely disintegrate them. Like that was that was good to me, and um, I like how like yeah how they're having the first little meeting, and um, he just Elvis character was talking about how they're all gonna die, and then he looked over at him and said, "I hope so." And I kind of got his wish at the end, man. He absolutely got crushed by yeah. that by that starfish. So, I mean, hey. Dude, and I... all the scenes where they show him, I'm I'm sorry to interrupt you, but uh, all the scenes where they show him, uh, like like the world through his eyes and him seeing everybody as nothing but his mom, like oh, where man, where he's dancing nice. with his mother. That one's really good to yes. me. Yes. Um. No, I really like Polka Dot Man too. Probably better than yeah, I like him better than King Shark. I think it's really cool that uh, James Gunn can get these characters that nobody knows about or cares about, and just you know make people actually like them. Yes, because like what um, Rat Girl? What was what was her like official title? Um, it's slipping me. Rat it's like is it rat. was it Rat Catcher too? Yeah. <laughs> Dude. So um her her character was was great. I liked her like you know her side story that that she had her backstory with her you know her father, you know, him being uh, an addict and you know still yeah. being able to take care of her with all the rats and everything and then her being comfortable around the rats. I don't know. That that it 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 struck a nerve with me. I I definitely enjoyed that character. It pulled on all the right heartstrings. And to see Idris Elba's character, you know, um, finally um, um, embrace the rats at the end. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> the little rat that she always carried around with her, her friend, uh, the one that like just would like wave at people and stuff like that. Like, uh, like I don't know. Her character was also very, very good, very good. That's what I said. But, it's um, um, they did a really good job with the characters in this film. Yeah, um, that opening scene though, with um, or like that, pretty much that opening sequence where they have the the, the first team that show up, 
<laughs> that show up on the island, man. Those are characters I kind of wish would have gotten more, you know, out of the movie as well. But like, definitely, definitely like Weasel and um, <laughs> like Michael Rooker's uh, character and uh, Pete Davidson's character. I like also like to see that um, they had the they had uh, John Courtney back as King uh, King Boomerang uh, as uh, Boomerang Man, uh, Captain Boomerang. There it is. Yeah, as Captain Boomerang uh, again. Um, but yeah, just that that whole opening sequence of of them landing, doing their doing their whole thing, talking about talking about the characters, what they did, and um. But yeah, I mean, I feel like it was kind of a definitely a red herring. Like that, like those aren't the characters that you really see featured in most of the stuff inside of the, uh, like you know, the trailers and stuff like that. So like. But it was nice to see that they had uh, Harley Quinn on their team. But yeah, just just that that moment when Pete Davidson walks out and he's like, "Yo, like we're here, like I sold I sold him out, like we're on the island." And then just to see him get his freaking face blown off, man! Like, God, yeah. the movie was it, it was very violent. The movie was so violent. The the fact I don't know why I laughed so hard because it's so morbid. But when the weasel just started drowning, I was like, oh, my God, <laughs> they got these dudes dropping in water and this guy can't swim. Oh, man, that's funny. And then they were like, is this a dog? <laughs> <laughs> is he a dog that looks like that? <laughs> no, he's like a weasel. It, he's, uh, he's, he's harmless. But, I mean, he has murdered, like, what was it, like 27 children? Yeah. <laughs> that's messed up. But, um. Yeah, I like to. I like that the the end credits scenes with uh, when Weasel uh, wakes up on the island and just like runs away. Yeah, like, it's 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 funny, but also the the um, end credits with you know Peacemaker and him being able to come back with the uh, with his uh, own HBO Max show. So mm-hmm. and I I think they've already filmed it. Like John Cena actually had been working hard. Like. He did the uh, Fast and Furious movie came out this year. Uh, Suicide Squad came out this year. But I mean, also with COVID, who knows like how it actually his shooting schedule worked. But he then, filmed uh, Fast and Furious way ahead of time. Yeah, and then um, now he's got the Peacemaker show. I think that um, that show is already fully filmed. I believe so. Yeah, maybe. And, um, yeah, so that man, that man's been working hard. Uh, he's trying to, he's trying to get on his, uh, he's trying to get on his, uh, the Rock status. Man, I, I gotta tell Rock you, Rock is in like two movies every year. So. John Cena is a better comedic actor than The Rock. Now you can say what you want to about action sequences or whatever, but John Cena is more funny than The Rock. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I definitely feel like that. I mean, I, I feel like the character and the way he was written in uh, the Suicide Squad definitely helped because it's just like that that kind of deadpan, like I'm not trying to be funny, but what I'm saying is absolutely ridiculous. So of course it's gonna be funny. And yeah. I think he 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 really hit that out of the park, man. He did a he did a really good job uh, portraying that portraying that character. Um. So yeah, uh, the movie was pretty good. I liked it. Thought it was funny. So I hope, I hope that um, they're able to make another one. I hope this isn't just another one-off DC movie because this is one of the this is one of the better ones, you know. Yeah. So they're they're moving in the right direction. I feel like. Um, I don't know i thought people kind of talk i no people people like uh deadpool and i mean that was one of the first like super violent superhero movies that actually you know makes it work and it's not all just about the violence of it and everything so i mean more movies like that please uh yeah <laughs> so they uh dc dc um definitely were able to 
capitalize on on that market of people who are just wanting to see an R-rated um, superhero movie that that's extremely funny. So they they did a they did an extremely good job on that. Yeah, so. that's true. And um, you know, folks, here we are. It's actually been a longer show than we expected it to be, but hey, that is how it goes. We've had a couple, well, we've had like a week off of the show. So it's just how it is. Sometimes we get back together, start talking. Yeah, damn it. We got stuff to say. Yeah. So we took a week off. Y'all don't have to worry about us for a week. Now we're back. We're talking to you and we're talking to each other mostly. So it's true. And you know, if I had any closing thoughts, I'd be like, hey, shoot for the stars. Sometimes you might just be able to hit one. But who knows? Oh. Um, um, my, uh, well. Oh, my, and then I was just going to tell people to follow me. Follow me on Twitter. Oh, yeah. True, 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 true. Follow, follow, follow the man's on Twitter. Um, at Jared Evans. At Jared Evans. I was going to say it, but then I was like, oh, why would I take his thunder like that? <laughs> Yeah, that's kind of that would be kind of messed up, but um, but yeah, um, those thoughts for me. I don't know, man. Uh, it's back as it, COVID's back, man. It's it's it never really went anywhere, but now it's it's uh, that Delta variant, man. Um, keep wearing keep wearing your masks. Um, I'm I'm fully vaccinated. I'm still wearing mine. Um. You know, I felt like I kind of miss I I missed that like little window of like people saying like of the CDC saying like yo if you fully vaccinated dog you ain't gotta wear a mask and uh, I'm I should have been fully vaccinated then yeah and and not wear my mask because I mean now they're like even if you are fully vaccinated you probably should still be wearing a mask so um you know I'm still out here thugging with the mask on um, I wear it at work but that's only because it's required. Yeah, um, but also, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm glad to be back. Took a week off. We older now. Um, we are. Yeah, I'm heard of, baby. It's um, true. Follow, oh, you say it's true, my fault. Yeah. Um, follow me on Twitter at young underscore ABG. I'm actually thinking about trying to get that change i mean i think I, I think i'll probably change it because i mean i'm not so young anymore man i'm four years we're four years away from 30 now bro i can't be young abg for life dude i'm i'm gonna be 45 years old on twitter talking about some i'm young abg no we 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 ain't young abg no more so uh be looking out for that i might change my i might change my twitter handle uh, sometime soon i don't know but um also uh you could follow us on twitter at unheard underscore of pod. That's going to be the same on Instagram, um, Facebook. Uh, we're unheard of. We have pages, uh, fan page. Yeah. Um, so be sure to uh, look out, look out for those pages. Um, YouTube, we have links. Um, one day we're going to be featured on the front page of YouTube. But um, until then, follow a link. <laughs> <Into the following. laughs> um so um so yeah that's that's where you can find us it's true um so yeah you know thank you everybody for still tuning in uh the last show we actually had more people watch instead of listen so it's really great hope you all still get to enjoy the show whether you watch or listen we just enjoy it either way and we will see you all back here next week. Might finally bring a guest back on. It's been a while. So we'll see what happens. And as always, we love you. We hear you. And we hope you hear us. Hear it unheard of. And once again, I'm Jared. And I'm Arthur. And this was Unheard Of. Yeah. <laughs>